we are starting with a new chapter in uh, the unit of human physiology and that is breathing and exchange of gases. This chapter, uh, normally when we uh, discuss this, we refer to it as respiratory system. So what exactly is respiration? Before we uh, take up all other things, we need to know what exactly is the process of respiration. Respiration means breaking down of respiratory fuel to obtain energy. And this can take place in presence of oxygen or absence of oxygen. And accordingly, we we'll classify this into aerobic and anaerobic respiration. So this is basically breaking of respiratory fuel to get energy. <clears throat> if this breakdown takes place in presence of oxygen, we'll call it aerobic respiration. So these become the types of respiration. That is aerobic and anaerobic. Aerobic respiration requires oxygen. Oxygen is essential for this respiration or this pathway to take place. Anaerobic takes place in absence of oxygen and that is why it is called anaerobic. Aerobic respiration takes place in mitochondria in higher organisms or in eukaryotic cells and the basic reaction because this detailed process we take up when we talk of cellular respiration. Here we'll just discuss it in one a step what exactly is going to happen here. It is glucose that is C6H12O6 is broken down in presence of oxygen and it is a multi-step reaction. Glycolysis takes place, then there is a link reaction and Krebs cycle electron transport chain, oxidative phosphorylation and so on. And this results in breakdown of glucose into carbon dioxide, water molecules and energy. Now this reaction is not balanced because we are not writing all intermediate steps. But to sum up what all happens is first is glycolysis. In glycolysis glucose is broken down into two molecules of pyruvic acid. Next step is it is known as link reaction. In link reaction, these two molecules of pyruvic acids are converted into acetyl coenzyme A. Acetyl coenzyme A. Third is Krebs cycle, where acetyl coenzyme A is broken down further to release carbon dioxide. And in all these processes, we keep getting NADPH2 and that is the a molecule which is going to give us ATP. Then takes place electron transport chain where this NADH is broken down and the electrons run down the gradient and pushing the protons into the mitochondrial, outer mitochondrial space. And the fifth is oxidative phosphorylation. This is the step where actually ATP production takes place. So in all these steps this aerobic respiration gets completed and the amount of energy that we get is around 38 ATPs. But ultimately what we get in hand or what can be used up is only 36. Two ATPs get used up in one of the processes. This is aerobic and as we said we have, we have just done it in short so that we understand what happens in this. Anaerobic respiration in lower organisms like in case of uh, yeast, 
glucose is broken down into ethyl alcohol. So if we talk of what happens in anaerobic respiration in yeast, glucose is broken down into pyruvic acid and pyruvic acid is converted into ethanol. Two molecules, two molecules and here carbon dioxide is also given up. So this is ethyl alcohol. This happens in yeast. But if we talk of our body, then anaerobic respiration can take place in muscles in, during excessive exercise. So what happens in muscles? And same thing also is seen in uh, RBCs because RBCs do not have mitochondria and that is why this aerobic breakdown cannot take place. So in muscles as well as in RBC. But the condition is in muscles only during excessive exercise. Again same thing. Glucose is first converted into pyruvic acid, two molecules. And pyruvic acid is converted into two molecules of lactic acid. Lactic acid accumulation in muscles results into muscle fatigue. And then this lactic acid has to be sent to liver where it can be further broken down. But both these, whether it is taking place in yeast or in case of our body in muscle cells during activities or severe activities or excessive physical activities and in RBCs because they do not have mitochondria. Glucose is broken down into lactic acid. And in both the cases, that is in anaerobic respiration, the amount or the number of ATPs released are 2. So here 2 ATP as well as here 2 ATP, sorry 2 ATP are released. That means in anaerobic respiration, one, the glucose is not completely broken down because here it is ethyl alcohol and here it is lactic acid and secondly the amount of energy or the number of ATPs obtained are very less as compared to what happens in case of aerobic respiration where 38 is what we get minus 2 ATP used up so ultimately what we get as uh, the end result is 36. So this classification of respiration is based on whether it takes place in presence of oxygen or in absence of oxygen. Aerobic respiration, except for this first step, glycolysis, which takes place in cytoplasm, others require mitochondria. So these are the two types of respirations, aerobic and anaerobic. We can also classify respiration as direct or indirect respiration. So in types, this is one classification. The second classification can be direct respiration in which the cell is directly in contact with the gases and the gaseous exchange can take place. That is in the, uh, from the atmosphere. This is seen in case of Organisms like amoeba, unicellular organism, it remains in water and the cell directly takes the oxygen from the surrounding. Whereas in higher organisms, the method is called indirect or indirect respiration. In this, the cells are not in contact with the surrounding directly, like what happens in our case. The cells are not in contact with the surrounding, so they cannot directly take oxygen or give out carbon dioxide. Whereas, there is a tissue which helps in taking those gases, respiratory gases, up to that tissue and then the exchange of gases takes place. So, we can classify it on the basis of uh, whether oxygen is needed or not and secondly, whether the gaseous exchange takes place between the cells and the surrounding directly or through certain tissues. So when we talk of uh, breaking down of respiratory fuel to generate energy, we need to add one more thing. If we are talking of aerobic, sorry, aerobic respiration, 
oxygen is taken in and carbon dioxide is given out. But this would be applicable only when we are talking of aerobic respiration. Like in this case, in yeast, carbon dioxide is given out. But in case of lactic acid formation, there is no carbon dioxide released. Because pyruvic acid is also 3 carbon compound and lactic acid is also 3 carbon. Now, after understanding the types of respirations, we need to understand what are the various steps which are required for these gaseous exchange to take place. The steps in which this respiratory process would get completed would be uh, multiple. So, let us write down those steps. The first is known as breathing or ventilation. And this actually means the respiratory gases, they enter into our body. Second step, once the gases, uh, respiratory gases reach up to the alveoli of lungs, now there is going to be exchange. So, exchange of respiratory gases between alveoli and the blood because it is the blood which is going to carry these respiratory gases. Third step would be transport of these gases through blood. Transport of respiratory gases by blood. Once blood carries uh, respiratory gases that is oxygen up to the tissues then there would be exchange of these gases between the blood and the tissue. So now here again exchange is taking place but this is exchange between blood and the tissues. In the tissues from the blood oxygen would diffuse in. So from blood oxygen would go to the tissue and from the tissues carbon dioxide would come into the blood. And then last step would be using this oxygen breakdown of glucose. So using oxygen glucose breakdown. To release energy. When we say that glucose is broken down in presence of oxygen to release energy, that is aerobic respiration. So what exactly happens uh, for this breakdown of glucose to take place? First, the respiratory gases should move in. We call it breathing or ventilation. Then there should be exchange between alveoli and the blood. Blood is going to carry those gases or the oxygen up to the tissue. Then exchange between the blood and the tissue, oxygen is going to diffuse from the blood to the tissue and then the cells of the tissue are going to use that oxygen to break down glucose so that energy can be released. So these are the steps in which respiratory process gets completed. Now in the next segment we will talk about various organs which help in respiration and the characteristic features of any surface area which can be considered as respiratory surface.